I really want to get to this. So, as we're all aware, I posted a video on my channel, and it had to do with the fact that H3 went live and interviewed Johnny, Oliver, and Becky. Um, it was unfortunately whenever I was at Disneyland, it was, you know, a it was just a schedule thing that couldn't, you know, work out. But they were super sweet to me. I, I saw the clip of, you know, them wishing me well at Disneyland, which they didn't even have to do. Um, I really appreciate that. And I'm I'm so glad with how the response of the stream has been. And I cannot wait to hear what Oliver, Becky and Johnny said. I have not watched their, you know, interview yet. I've been waiting to do it on stream. But a lot of people want me to watch the intro because of the choir that sings Toxic Gossip Train. I saw a little part of this, but then I was like, okay, I'm going to wait to save this for stream. So we're going to watch the choir <laughs> and then we are going to get into the interview. So let's get into this. Jesus. <laughs> it's like already. Hey everybody. It's been a while since you've seen my face and <laughs> I haven't been doing so great to be totally honest. Uh, <laughs> Took a little bit of a break. No. Two weeks to be uh, exact. No. Uh, a lot of people have been saying things about me mm -mm. that aren't really quite true at all, and doesn't matter. If no. It's true, though, does it? <laughs> no. Oh my god! I just realized that he's doing the green screen of her room. I didn't catch that. <laughs> I didn't catch that. I did not catch that. I did not catch that until one of you commented it. I did not catch that. That is so funny. Her, like, family photos in the background. As long as it's entertaining, right? You guys having fun? Take it away. He's so proud of himself. Did you see that? <laughs> do these people know what they're singing? Like, do they know the <laughs> The fact they were all waiting in the studio right beside Ethan because you saw the green screen. <laughs> It's so good. I'm not laughing at them. I'm just like, the f this is so fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you know, I made this little apology. I forgot to mention a few things, but they're not big deals. For example, my brother's a pedophile. <laughs> Forget about that one. Yeah, he was he was trying to pick up a 14 year old man. That was inappropriate. Uh, I guess it's not important. Hey, what about that time I was sending nudes of my friend Trisha Payton uh, to 14 year olds? Uh, nah, nobody cares about that. Yeah, let's talk about this toxic trade. No, no. There's nothing wrong with a little inflation porn, to be honest. Shout out, Dad. That one is totally fine, to be honest. He didn't. He did nothing wrong. My dad is innocent. Well, that's been fun. Especially that time I uh, made kids put tampons in their mouth to take a groupie photo with me. Oh what my god! Do? What's with all this gossip? Nah. Uh. Come on. It's not like I was talking about my sex life with kids, talking about my divorce with kids, gossiping with two children about children, trauma dumping on kids. Oh yeah, and assaulting a girl on stage. It's really not a big deal. It's just a bunch of toxic gossip and man. The fuck they're in the room, dude! <laughs> as long as it's entertaining. I don't know what to say. Wow. 
Now just speaking to me. That's exactly what I feel. Oh my God. Yeah, but what do I know, right? Fuck me, right? Nah. You guys wouldn't understand anyway. The worst thing, the least worst thing about it is the inflation part. Alright guys, well, thanks for being here. It's, we've been gone for two weeks and we got so much to talk about. I uh, thank you all for being here and I look forward to having a great show. Thank you guys. Let's get right into it. I'm in awe. I'm... <laughs> Do you guys have a name, the band name? What is it? Bofi? Bo Bofi Choir. Band on fire. Choir. Yeah. Fucking hell. Um Wow. Well, before we get to the interview part, what I do want to say is can I give you all a little bit of like insider tea here on how Colleen is handling this? That is what's going to take her down. Tours being cancelled. Trisha dropping her. Sponsorship sponsors. I meant to say podcast sponsors. Netflix could drop her. YouTube could demonetize her. Anything. Colleen Ballinger cracks when you start to make fun of her singing or songwriting ability. Because she believes that she is the greatest... I. I, whether it sounds ridiculous or not, Colleen Ballinger, I can promise you, believes that she is the greatest, the greatest voice to ever, hello, can I come in focus? She believes that she is the greatest voice to walk the earth, and anyone who has ever experienced her in, like, real life knows that people genuinely, like, say this about her, that she believes that, like, her gracing you with her singing or songwriting is, like, it, it's God's gift, like, Colleen Ballinger's voice is a, is a gift from God. If God was Satan. Um, she genuinely believes it. So when people start making fun of her singing or songwriting, that's when they're going to get to her. Because when she went on Waitress, she got made fun of so much for how she was singing. People were saying that she sounded like Miranda. She had many breakdowns to me about the harsh critics not understanding her gift. That's how she talks. Like... She has a gift, is what she says when she sings. And whenever she would create songs for Josh on the ukulele, she would refer to them as gifts. Like that she had a gift. So when you start making fun of her voice, mama. Mama. All right, let's get to this. So H3 brought on Oliver, Johnny, and Becky. Um, Again, unfortunately, I couldn't be there. However, I'm... And I don't want this to sound bad, but I'm actually kind of glad that I wasn't there because I'm glad that they got the platform and I'm glad that people were there listening for them because I think it's easy for me to take for granted that I have the platform that I have on YouTube or on Twitch and like whenever I talk about things you know what I mean like I kind of take for granted that I can talk and people can listen um so as much as it was unfortunate that I couldn't be there I'm glad that it further highlighted Oliver, Becky, and Johnny, you know, this, you know what I mean? If, if, if you kind of know where I'm getting at here. Um, so we're going to watch this and I have heard that they, they all, all three of them did an amazing job. I also heard that Ethan and Eli did an amazing job with this interview. I'm excited to, to see this because I have been waiting a couple days to see, was this only two days? No, it wasn't. Oh, three, only three days. Was I in Disneyland three days ago? I have no perception of time. Wow. Time and place. Also, Ela looks... Mm-hmm. With this hair. 
Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's get to this. Hello, everybody. All right, we have Oliver, Becky, and Johnny. Welcome to the Hey, show. guys. Uh, guys, thank you for standing by. I'm sorry it took so long. I know everyone knows, but I'm just going to introduce again. So this is Oliver, this is Becky, and this is Johnny. I know everyone knows, but just in case there's someone who stumbles across this who has no idea about the entire situation. So I appreciate you guys uh, uh, standing back and standing by, as Trump said. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, let's see. So we have... Um, and I know all of them were really nervous to do this as well. And like, I, I, I know I saw... Um, Becky's tweet specifically, and I think I saw Oliver's as well about you know being nervous to go on. And I, I from what I read, they did an amazing job. Um, so I want them all to know that as a fellow person who's been speaking, I am very proud of them. I really, really, really mean that. Um, and yes, I did see that Ethan kept calling Johnny what Jack was it or something like that. Johnny, they got it right there. You used to work for Colleen. On yes. the tour, and then we have Becky. Becky, Hi. you are you're the girl from the the infamous story of the yes. ha, uh, the the skirt thing, situation. I don't know how to put it delicately. This is <laughs> horrible. Yeah, and then Oliver, you are the Hello. Un, the unfortunate recipient of some really wild yeah. messages. Oh yeah, tell me about it. Oh, <laughs> so anyway, thank you for coming together, guys. Are you guys all weenies? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, none of you guys are weenies. No, none of them. No. None of them were in the group chat. I think they were. Johnny was in his own group chats, and I think them two may have been in other group chats, but none of them were in the weenies. Thought I was, but no. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So there's so many more people out there. Oh, there's a lot. Yes. Mm-hmm. So first, I guess uh, Johnny. So how did you get recruited into uh, working for her? Um, well, I actually started watching her videos and tuning in. I love Johnny's shirt. When I was 12, I was 15, and I started entering tiny chat rooms. I created a fan account. So tiny chat was the equivalent of Zoom. And I was met with a bunch of people my age who were like-minded, and we enjoyed this character. And it turned into a very inappropriate um, situation and power dynamic between them and us. And I, I was like a part of the OG fandom. Like, we weren't the weenies or anything. We were the cookies. The original name of the fandom. So so you you joined a community with other fans. So what was the the power dynamic? Uh, I'm not understanding. They were Colleen's camp was involved in that somehow? So it started because I was tweeting her off of my personal account, but then I started getting flack because I was just in high school, so kids would make fun of me for it. So I like created this private Twitter account. I created my own fan account, and then I had followed. There was probably maybe Thank like you, Veronica. four to five other fan accounts. We all followed each other. I saw that three of the girls um, behind these accounts, who were all like my age, they would Skype Colleen, mm-hmm. and I was like, "So this what is the a hell different." Okay, sorry, oh, just to okay. clarify, this is a different Colleen chat group. It's this isn't the weenies. Oh, wow. that's, okay. that's, yeah, that's, that's why. That's it. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, it's been going on for wow. years. And so, okay, so were you on ch- like voice chat with her? Or- for context, weenies was 2017 on. Anything before that was not the weenies. Johnny was pre 2017. We were post 2017. For like a chat room. Yeah. So tiny chat was basically <laughs> this. It's um like a public Skype Zoom type of uh-huh. situation. You could either have a public profile or you know uh public chat room or you could have it private. Ours was tinychat.com slash Colleen's cookies. The password that we had to type in to get into the room was queefing. Oh, <laughs> not queefing. Not queefing. Oh my God. She loved that word. Oh my God. She loved that word. So much of her content revolved around the word queef, queefing, like, just different things to do with, like, pussy jokes, like, oh my god, Becky's eye roll. Becky, you're so real for that. Becky, I'm joining you on that. That was, like, a Stranger Things one, so I look like I was having, like, an exorcism. <laughs> What's going on there? I learned what that word was. Awesome. Um, <laughs> and we would be, okay, let's say, Not if creeping. I was chatting with my 14 to 17-year-old friends as a 15-year-old during this time period, if we were on Tiny Chat seven days a week... Colleen, her ex-husband Joshua, her brother Trent. Um, it was like the three of them were the repeat offenders. They would just be on at oh. least like four to five times a week with us. Wow. wow. So, okay, yeah. that's that's interesting to know too that her brother, who was the one messaging you, Oliver, had access 
And obviously, he must have been granted access. Yes. Uh -huh. Kind of, kind of. He actually, he got scolded for talking to my friends and I back in the day. And we found that out because Colleen had come on Tiny Chat and told us one day that her parents um, had a talk with him because he lived at home. And this was before he had gotten his cochlear implant, which helps him hear now. He was born deaf. Before that, he couldn't hear, so he didn't understand. He had to mute mm -hmm. his computer. Mm -hmm. um, so her parents were afraid that there would be, you know, sensitive topics being discussed, at, you know, within their family that would be picked up on his computer. Um, and it's kind of messed up that that was their concern rather than their 30 something year old child talking. That is so creepy. I had heard this. I mean, Johnny and I had spoken about this in private. I didn't know if he was ever going to go public with it, but that it was that the family were on to Trent for joining these, you know, chat rooms with fans. And because he was deaf, he wasn't muting his mic. And then the people in the chat rooms were hearing his parents talk shit or, you know, Colleen talking shit or Rachel talking shit that they were like, don't go on these because you're not muting them. And then he would go on them and he would mute them because he still wanted to talk to the kids and stuff. It's like, and the parents just, like, allowed him to do it. Like, he was a grown man and stuff like that, but they were still, like, had no problem with him doing it. To a bunch of kids on the internet. Yeah. Also, what are they talking about in the house? That's, that's so scary. Well, I mean, are we really surprised that, like, <laughs> no, I want to know. <laughs> and so, um, were any, either the other two of you in a chat room with Colleen at any point? No. 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 And so, I guess, Jack, what do you think they, that she got Jack. Like, coming on here and talking with you guys? Like, she came on, sounds like, pretty frequently. You know, it's interesting because we really don't know. Fuck Trent. Trent for jail 2024. Can we get the comments? Say, I'm actually going to comment it myself. Hashtag jail for Trent 2024. What her motives were. Um, I've been asked to try to describe it in one word i think the power that keeps coming to mind is um power um mm. which she clearly abused i'm not sure if she went into the situation you know me and my friends who were fans way back in the day i don't think it was as malicious back then but as we know technology has blossomed and it's just there's more accessibility it's so much easier to be in the DMs, johnny's a really great speaker video, video chat like this mm. and uh yeah it was just uh a different world, but there's a lot of parallels from the video chats and the DM conversations between the weenies and Corey's clip. And so, not like, Corey's clip. On that, in what way do you, how, how is she like abusing her power? How is she interacting with you guys inappropriately now that you're, now that you're older and looking back on it? Well, abuse of power in the sense that. So what age is everyone now? So I'm 20 now. Chris Hansen needs to knock on Trent's door. Chris Hansen will not stop emailing me. Literally will not stop emailing me. Will not stop. <laughs> yeah. Will not stop. Um. What age is everyone now? I'm 20. Johnny's 27? Becky is... Help me out. <laughs> chat, please. Oliver, I know you're in the chat. What age is Oliver? What age is he? Becky's 21. Oliver's 18. And Johnny's 27. Okay. Her and Joshua, her ex, they divided the fandom a lot, even before they were married. I wasn't always oh my God, Oliver's still so young. I was way, way closer with Joshua David Evans. He really swooped in, and that's a whole other tangent. But they would almost, like, pit us against each other as fans. They would pit us against one another. Like, you'd be Team Josh, yep. Team Colleen. True. Throughout their entire relationship, it was like that. I, I knew some people who... Not damn, this dinosaur has been grooming for years. Not that way back in the day not you calling her a dinosaur did not like him and i didn't understand i liked both of them it was weird and sometimes we'd end up fighting online for them and it would be encouraged Colleen used to use a hashtag that we came up with it was drama with like five extra a's oh so my god yes see, like back in the day she used to use this hashtag and it was always when there was like drama within the fandom it, yes it encouraged it. it's, it's like she ate it on for us it didn't uh -huh. feel like a joke at the time. It felt like she was like, yeah. She also used to tell us shit about other fans so that we would then hate on the fans and then would go to the other fans and be like, I don't know why that person's hating on you. Maybe you should speak out against them. She used to like instigate shit with like 15 year olds. 
I want you guys to. I'm not getting interviewed by Chris Hansen. I said he was interviewing me. I didn't say it. I responded. That's why he's emailing so much. I hate Dove. It, well, now it feels that way. Mm -hmm. But as a child, it kind of just felt playful. Just felt like our, um, in her words, just felt like a creepy aunt coming up, just trying to hang out with us kids. And, you know. It's a weird way to spend your time as an adult. Right? I'm, I'm 27 now, which I believe is the age she was when she started talking to me. And there's... Which is so crazy that Johnny has not grown up to the age that she was doing all this. And she, like, still was doing it a couple years ago. No part of me that wants to open up my laptop and <laughs> throw right. a bunch of kids or like spectate their conversations because Tiny Chat had that option. There could be like the four of us in the chat room right now or five. Um, and then there could be spectators and they can chat, but they don't necessarily have to broadcast. And um, they abused that feature. Huh. There's actually evidence that I posted of Joshua pretending to be me, talking yeah. to friends as if he was me. And he then broadcasted after however long he stayed on that night. Clearly, I wasn't on all of them thought it was me and then so, so your relationship with josh is is interesting and weird to me because mm -hmm. I, i've seen people talking about him as like oh he's innocent now and he's a victim of hers because i don't know anything about him or their previous relationship but i read that he was talking to you in the same way that colleen was talking to other people and i was like yo what what the fuck is this so yep. so how did he reach out to you and what was that relationship so this is the ex-husband so honestly in 2012 we would primarily tiny chat with colleen and trent josh would pop Not in every once in a while but he would only do it like if it was with Colleen. It was very, very rare that he would just come on by himself unless he was a spectator even more than we had realized. But like actually broadcasting wasn't super often. So I, my parents, uh, I was just having a shitty time in school, which is kind of why I gravitated towards this online world. And so my parents were like, you know what, let's do something special for the holidays. And Christmas 2012, uh, she was doing a show in New York City. And at the time she either did West Coast or East Coast. And I was in Illinois, so I had to pick one if I wanted to go. So we made a little trip out of it. And then that is the evening of the infamous crown. There's something to be said as well about how many people have spent enormous amounts of money to go to her shows. Like, I feel like it was so normalized in the fandom for people to spend hundreds of dollars to fly cross country to see a Miranda Singh show. Oh. <laughs> the infamous crown that I was given, um, that is signed by, what, well, I don't want to show the phone number on the back, but Miranda, Colleen, and Josh himself. And they just went down the line and signed it. And then afterwards, he flipped it open and kept writing. And I was kind of like, what? And then he handed it to me and just kind of gave me like a little nod of affirmation. Was just kind of like, use it whenever you need. Huh? Wow. That is the weirdest like, okay. shit ever. Wow. Yeah. He gave you his phone number and said, text me? I was 16, yeah. Wow. Fuck? Yeah. Did he know who you were or that you were in that chat? Yes, but see, the thing is, I was really flattered about it because I thought Colleen would be more excited to see me and meet me, but I felt like I had this like weird instant connection with Josh in person. And then I was like, okay, well, Colleen's kind of fixated on like her babes, if you will, and I didn't really feel like one of them. I was just known within the fandom. And I was like, well, Josh seems to really like me. And he started giving me promises. Um, he incorporated, he pinned my YouTube channel, my little aspiring one back in the day, on his channel that eventually accumulated like 1.5 million subscribers. That was a massive deal to me. Like, I got bullied out of high school my sophomore year, and these people just honed in on me. And they were like, ooh, like, this is good. He's an easy target. And I was. And yeah, they just totally abused their power in that sense. They take who they deem as weak, vulnerable people, and they create the victims or they, they turn you into more of a victim, but they also do it in a way where they pretend to be your savior a lot. And I feel like that's such a great point. Like they victimize you, but try to make you feel that they're your savior when they're the ones making you the victim. And that's why these people are so fucked up. Cause that's what they do. Then you need them because you're a victim and they're your savior, but they made you a victim so that you would look at them as the savior. It's so fucked up. It creates a very abusive so fucked up. dynamic, especially for a team going into adulthood it followed me clearly I, I didn't work for them until i was 22 years old and looking back now i'm like i was an adult i'm ashamed of that but it is all by control it's what i was brought up to believe was right <laughs> and wrong and i was just influenced so um, i, I want to ask you a question going back to when he handed you the number so yeah so you, when did you reach out to him and how did you reach out to him how long was it after you got it yeah so um i somewhat revived a dead laptop of mine but it's it's on life alert like it's it comes and goes so i think i have more texts that i could go back and find i believe on that night i, I sent him something like Hey, thanks for your number. This means a lot to me. I think I even included something like, I promise not to abuse it and just use it when needed. Because I took it as he was going to be a mentor, as he says today, but that's not what it was. I mean, no YouTuber. <laughs> no YouTuber that is like closer in age to your parents and you're a child needs to be giving you the phone number. That is so. Hello? Buzz. And um, I, yeah, I. Just... And did he respond to you that evening? He did. Yeah. Okay. And then you guys started texting like on a one-on-one -on -one basis. 
not super regularly because I didn't want to abuse it. I didn't want to lose this privilege because they like gave you little things, but then would kind of hold it over your head, even if they didn't say this it. It's like the similar story that I said about like flying me out to VidCon or, you know, hanging out with me in Dublin or hiring me. You know, they, this, what Johnny, I'm saying this to validate Johnny, not make it about myself, where they would, you know, do things to dangle it over your head so you would do things for them. To your face, they would, it was heavily implied. So you you had said that he said he wanted to be your mentor. So how what is it that you think he he got out of that relationship with you? Well, I had just found out like a week ago that he was trying to be my mentor when he publicly stated that mm -hmm. because he was just my big bro. He was he was my my you know thirty year old BFF. I didn't know he was trying to mentor me. I thought I was in a friendship, mm -hmm. and I was it, in my world. And uh, yeah, that whole dynamic. It, it's just he had me run a Twitter account for him. It was a character that he ran um, a belligerent drunk. Blonde bimbo, if you will, by the name of Sarah Ridiculous. Not Sarah Ridiculous. Beyond, I, I'm sure of it. I, I haven't even rewatched any of the videos recently, but I'm sure that would spark up some combo. Um, and I ran this Twitter account for him. He approached me and he asked if I would run it because I was running a fake account. I had I had created like a spoof of Sarah Ridiculous, and he contacted one of our friends who he thought was running it and was like, "Hey, you want to run the official one?" And she was like, "No, it's Johnny." So he came to me and was like, "Do you want to run the official one?" And I was like, "Hell yeah!" And he gave me the password, the username, and he was like, "I mean, similar stories to you know Colleen with Miranda to me, you know, running the accounts." Why are YouTubers so lazy? Do your own work. Your discretion. I'll pop in from time to time. I might you know interact on the account and stuff, but it's all you. It, it was. It was what Colleen said to Adam. With that's, 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 what I, that's what's interesting. It seems parallel, where they both mm -hmm. asked you and Adam yeah. to do free work for them. Did he ever offer to pay you or compensate you or anything like that? No, but he always promised me things in the future. It was always if I played my cards right. I was pinned on his YouTube channel. I'd be featured in little, you know, BS YouTube videos from time to time. Uh, he would say things like, if I ever make it big, I'm taking you with me. We're going to make it big together. Mm -hmm. And I was just impressionable, and I believed him for sure. wholeheartedly. Did you put a lot of time into running that Twitter account? Not just Twitter account, just uh, investing so much time and energy into my relationship with not only him, but these Exposure people. is not pay. Mm -hmm. In general, yeah. the best way I can describe but when you're, it is, you know, But when you're young, you think it is, you know? Oh, not fitting in in school, constantly feeling like I'm chasing the cool kids. I finally escaped that and found a world that I did feel accepted in, but I didn't realize that I was just chasing the cool kids in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. That, it's embarrassing to say, followed me into adulthood. And it just turned into like this cycle, you know? Something that struck me as interesting is when Josh and Colleen got divorced, you say that Josh stopped talking to you all together in that moment, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so they announced their divorce, and I remember, like, my entire family was devastated. Mm -hmm. Like, my mom cried because mm -hmm. they built relationships with my parents, too. Colleen referred to my mom as her Chicago mom sometimes. Josh, we went to dinner with him, and then they hung out with him, too. Like, my parents, my two oldest sisters, one's 42, one's 40. Why did they make us all so involved in their lives? And then denied any of it. You know what I mean? I mean, the parallels. <sighs> what is going on? There's a big age gap between me and my youngest sister. So my parents are kind of used to having different generations in the family. And they really kind of took these people in kind of like their own. And I say that lightly because, you know, it's not like they had this massive relationship with these people. But it was someone who I trusted. And because they knew I was dealing with such BS, you know, in the real world. They you confided in, in him a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just messy how not only did they prey on us kids, but they really went above and beyond to like prove to the parents that they were safe people as well. Mm -hmm. That's really wild that they spend time with your family like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's she like tries to say it's 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 a lot more minimal than it was, which is infuriating. Mm -hmm. So when Josh was yeah, and I agree with him in that where you know things are being downplayed whenever we are now adults speaking about things that adults were doing to us, and then the adults are, you know, trying to downplay what we went through. And we're like, no, we're just grown up and we can talk about it nice. So go fuck yourself. Like he immediately goes to you when, once they divorce and he never wrote you back again? Yeah, so they got divorced. I remember I was just trying to like take care of my YouTube parents on the internet and see from both sides. In the process of doing that, I went to his channel and my, my, my channel was unpinned along with all of the Ballingers. And I was like, well, why was I bumped in? And uh, he just completely cut me out. I was trying to message him. I texted him and was like, I'm, I'm sorry. Did I say something to upset you? Like, I, I guess I started off as a fan of Colleen, but like, you're like a brother to me. Like don't leave me dude come on you said we we go somewhere together i was heartbroken it felt like i was going through some weird effed up breakup and i was still only like i think i was like 18 at the time so i was just entering adulthood it was a really confusing time for me and he just completely left me high and dry it's pretty, so it's pretty like a week cool. later yeah i made a, a public statement on this ridiculous account that i didn't feel right running it any longer i didn't really elaborate at the time because i didn't want to destroy my friendship with colleen but yeah then the next time i heard from joshua david evans was last month when he was trying to damage and his way into my life so i'm sensing that a lot of the kind of uh, negative feelings associated with this is just the way he discarded you at the end after you really seem to have built what you perceived as a meaningful relationship with him. 
I almost felt like he got what he needed out of me, and then he was just done. Because I also, there's a story about how I came out to him one night when I flew all the way out to California to see one of his shows, and I was only like 17. And I wasn't out publicly yet, or like I used to like my family. And I told him that I wanted to tell my parents I first had come out to him, which he responded with, that's none of my business. And I was like, oh, God. And then I tried to give him redemption. And I was like, well, I'm going to tell my parents. What do you think about that? And he was like, I'm, I'm, I'm worried for you. I'm nervous for you. I wouldn't do that. What? Yeah. That's wild. In person yeah, you said that to him? What's that? Was that in person? Yeah. Yeah. And there was another witness there who heard that he was at the time. Huh. What do you think that came from? I described it to Swoop, who's been doing a docuseries on this. As I feel like it was the moment of him being like, oh shit, this kid's turning 18 in a couple days. He's coming into his own. I don't, I'm losing control. That's how I feel in hindsight. Like just the fear in his eyes. It, it wasn't like a, oh, that's not my business. Like you do you, kiddo. It was like, well, that's not my business. And I'm, I'm just, I can see it in my brain. It's like scarred. And it just, I don't know. It felt like a moment of loss of control and him kind of not knowing what to do and panicking. And I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I always wondered because I wondered if he, how much him and Colleen talked about like his relationship with you and her relationship with other folks. I don't think they, I don't know what Johnny's going to say next. So maybe we'll have a similar opinion here. We'll see if we do. I think we might. I think they didn't talk about it because Colleen was doing to me, you know, her things. Johnny and Josh had their thing. And if they both talked about it, then they would both be telling each other that they were talking shit about each other to fans or that they were acting inappropriately to fans. So I don't know what Johnny's going to say, but my opinion is that Colleen and Josh did not specifically tell each other what they were messaging fans other than, you know, I love my fans. And they didn't elaborate to each other because I also think they just didn't love each other and they didn't like each other at all. But let's see if me and Johnny have a similar thing. Because there seems to be a parallel, and I wonder if she knew Let's or if they see. were coordinating or if there was any kind of sense of something like that between them. Well, here's the thing. they She had her relationship with Adam while Josh was having his relationship. Are we going to have the same opinion? We didn't talk about it too much because they were playing both on their phones on opposite ends of the couch. Oh, my God. We have the same opinion. Have not watched this yet. We have the same opinion. Wow. Yeah, I mean, minors. That's so weird. Wow. Yeah, I mean, no wonder there was tension in their relationship. I mean, if all this stuff was going on behind the scenes. If, if you're not paying attention to your significant other because you're chatting with children online... That's that's grounds for a failed relationship in, in my world, at least. It's just weird. I, I don't get it. Weird. I, it's very weird. Yeah. Did this leave a lasting effect on you that you were like friends with this older guy that you confided in, and then all of a sudden he just disappeared and left you like discarded, nothing? Did that did that hit you pretty hard, like growing up into maturity? Yes, but then I had my redemption. My Lord and Savior, Colleen Christ, came and swooped in, and she was the hero of the Not day. Not Colleen Christ. She trauma bonded with me to the really? death. And yeah, yeah, we both hate Josh, right? We have so much uh, in common. So when really. did she reach out to you? How did she know to reach out to you? Well, I reached out to her because it was. Uh, Sorry, like, knowing what Colleen did to me about Josh, like, what she said and stuff, the fact she was also doing it to Johnny and also doing it to the weenies and stuff, she spent all her time trauma dumping. She spent all her time talking about her ex-husband when she was pregnant with her new baby daddy's baby. Think about that. She got, you know, she did her show, you know, served its purpose. She got a new baby daddy, had the kids, popped them out. And was still talking about her ex-husband to us. Lord. Um, Corey had posted on Facebook back in 2018, early in the year, that they were going to need help on the upcoming tour. And I DM'd him and I was like, hey, I'm interested. And he was like, okay, we'll talk. And I was like, well, forget him. I don't want to go through him. I want to go through Pauline. But I didn't Fuck have her Corey. number yet. And she didn't DM me a lot. So it was kind of hard to get in contact with her. However, I still lived in Illinois. I was going to see a show in Wisconsin that weekend with my mom. And she would just cover my tickets. I didn't pay for tickets. I did <laughs> Same. All the years I've supported her maybe paid for like two to three tickets. Um, and my mom and I, we went to her meet and greet just like everybody else, but we stayed uh, towards the back of the line. That's what people would do to get their extra few minutes with her if you were like a cookie, a, a queef or whatever she wanted to call you. Not queef. And that Not day, queef. I decided to put myself out there and just tell her to her face, hey, saw Corey posted about this. Tell me in. I want to do it. To my surprise, she was like, absolutely. That's the best idea ever. She was like, you know my show, you know me, you know the ins and outs. Why didn't I think of this? And I was like, damn, I thought you were going to say maybe. The shocking reality about, oh my God, imagine hiring like a proper professional over hiring my underage fans. But this is better than I expected. And that's how I got wound up in it. I want to say that was like March of 2018. And then like Fucking a month later, crazy. I started going on tours with her. Oh, that's when you guys, that's when you guys bonded, like in person while you guys were touring. Yes, yes, but she used a lot of my trauma with Josh to bond with me because her friend Corey was being straight up abusive to me the entire tour. Fuck and Corey. I would go to her and cry to her and be like, I am absolutely miserable. Like, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I expected. I want to go home. 
she'd be like, no, like, please, we just have to make sure Jordan goes as smoothly as possible. He's an asshole. That's like all she loved doing as well, which is she would love creating problems and then would love making you feel crazy for dealing with them and would try and minimize them. Bonk. Fuck her. Oh, hello. And then there was one specific time where I told her, I was like, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. And she looked at me and she was like, you just saying that you feel like you're walking on eggshells is exactly how I felt when I was in my relationship with her ex, Joshua. And then uh, it's always about her. About him. And I was like, wait, wait, are we not going to Corey? Oh, 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 OK, sure. Yes, Josh, we hate him. Great. And then it was just kind of like. The end of that conversation was, okay, well, glad you feel better. We both hate Josh. And what now? See, everything that you had a problem with, or if you were going through something, she was going through it 10 times worse. 10 times worse. She's like the most narcissistic, self obsessed prick I've ever had the displeasure of coming into contact with. Went back to the bus, they went back to their hotel rooms. What did my room rights got revoked. Your what got revoked? My room rights. Not room, oh, rights. room rights. What does that mean? Yeah. It means what it sounds like. Uh, <laughs> I basically, it was like one of the night two or three, we were like in Albany, New York. And we, after shows, we get on the bus. Nothing progressed. She would always just change the topic to Josh. Yeah. Load everything up, drive to a hotel, get there about 2 a.m., unload. If you wanted to sleep on the bus or wanted a room, you you have the well, option. Why would but, anybody choose to sleep on the bus? Well, <laughs> Mr. DeSoto is an interesting one. And there were a few nights He's a creepy where one. he actually enjoyed sleeping on the bus. I will say very comfortable, like a little cocoon, tempur it was, it was nice. It wasn't the worst, but, you know, it's one thing to have a little cocoon versus a, a queen mattress in an actual room. And there was an evening where we got to a location super late. We're still trying to figure out the dynamic of rooms. Uh, two of Colleen's I fucking hate Corey so much. Room. Me and Corey were paired up, and then obviously Colleen and Eric had shared a room. Me and Corey, we had discussed early on that the way it would work is we would either share the room, or if a person says, I want it tonight, Sure, I never planned on doing that because it was Corey DeSoto. I'm not going to try to fight him for a room. If he ever told me I want it for myself, I was going to respectfully bow out and sleep on the bus. I would fight um, him for a room. <laughs> to me. So this night, we park. I, I would, poke my head out of my little bus cocoon, and I see that him and Pauline are standing in like a little living area. And I get out. We're at the hotel, so I see that um, the tour manager had left out room keys for all of us. And I see Corey and Johnny. I grab mine. I go up to the hotel, or actually I asked Corey, I was like, do you, do you care if we share the room? And he was just kind of, he mumbles a lot. And, and it's just inaudible mumbles. It's not talking, it's literally mumbling. So I was like, okay. Then he went in his little bus. That is so true, by the way. That is so true. Corey, if you talk to Corey, mm, mm, mm. Corey, do you have a problem with that? Mm, mm, mm. Literally speaks like that behind the scenes. Corey did what Colleen did, piss you off. What? Speak! Cocoon and shut the curtain, and I was like, baby sleeping on the bus tonight, okay. So I went up to the room, and then I texted him, and I said, I didn't realize I grabbed both room keys. Do you want to sleep in the room? I wasn't clear on your answer on the bus. If you want a key, I can run down and get you one, or I'll open the door for you. Like, I was giving options. And he was like, no, it's fine. Just make sure that you're awake early enough in the morning, because I'll run up and get a key so I can get in the hotel gym. And I was like, okay. Flash forward to the next morning. He comes up to the hotel room and I get a knock on the door. I open the door and I greet him, just hi, good morning. And he doesn't say much, but again, he goes, he mm. mumbles, so I was like, okay. And I went and I sat back on the bed and I was like, how are you? Like, what's up? And he wasted no time. He just immediately started screaming at me, talking about I stole the room from him and he has worked his way up to the top. He has seniority. Um, he would lick a toilet bowl clean for Colleen. Like he deserves the room. I don't. And I was like mortified beyond. Um, and he, I was like, Corey, I think this is a misunderstanding. Can we please? Ugh, I remember when Johnny told me this and he was like, yeah, Corey went off. He was like, I've licked the grind that Colleen Ballinger has walked on. And I would put the red carpet out just to be there for her. Like you do not, you have not worked your way up. Like I have, who cares? Corey, that's so embarrassing to admit his entire life centers around someone else's life. Corey DeSoto does not have his own life or his own interests or his own ambitions or his own talents or his own like he is one of the most sad people i've ever had like the encountered like he is really 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 he's a sad person please talk and he stormed out of the room and he's so insecure and i just sat in the bed for a few minutes had a little bit of a panic attack cried <laughs> ran out of the hotel ran to a park nearby and i called my mom and that was the first of many phone calls to my mom where i was like i don't know if this was a good idea so they didn't they no longer let you stay in hotel room after that yeah, Colleen had texted me and I had um, shared these DMs, or not DMs, text messages then, 
um, on TikTok a few nights ago, and a lot of people glossed over that conversation because I don't think they remember the whole lot of the context behind it. But she was like, it was totally my mistake. I didn't explain the situation right to you. I love you. Da, 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 da. Uh, it was just all deflection. And, and then I ended up um, having an in-person conversation with her because I explained that I was it bothered me. And I wanted to know the correct way to approach Corey because I thought it was necessary to apologize. Yeah, Corey DeSoto is known in West Hollywood, like within the gay scene as being like one of the biggest social climbers. And he's also just not respected within the gays in L.A. Like for the gays in L.A. not to like you, pff, please. He's so hated. And there was... I wasn't going to say this, but whenever I was in West Hollywood and I was at Pump, which is Lisa Vanderpump's, you know, restaurant before it shut down. Um, when I was in there, one of the guys that came up to me was like, can I tell you something about Corey? And he opened up about like his experiences with Corey and his friends experiences with Corey, if you know what I mean. And I won't elaborate further, but they were like, he is one of the most hated people. <laughs> they were like, he's such a joke. Like everyone just refers to him as Miranda Singh's puppet him and um yeah when we got to the next theater which oddly enough is i think the night that becky was there if it was the syracuse oh, wow. interesting yeah full circle it, it all loops in um that night i had apologized to Corey for that incident and Col was the food good there the food was really good at pump it was really bad at sir i got food poisoning from the one at sir queen had told me in the conversation i had with her prior or after the apology she was like i think it's just best if you don't use the room anymore and you can sleep in my bed on the back of the bus if you want which felt weird to me i didn't I, I tried once and I was like, not a fan. And then um, she just tossed me off to our lighting sound guy tour manager's room, who they also started sharing with the bus driver. So it was like four grown dudes trying to get every minute of sleep. This low budget asked her, well, good thing it's not happening anymore. You could try to shower within like an hour time frame. It was impossible. So I ended up just um, not having a shower in the morning. I, I had to wait till we would get to the venue and I would choose what days it was necessary versus not. And if I had time before work, great. If I didn't, I'd wait till the show was over and I would shower before we got back on the bus in the venue, public showers, like the, the gym shower, essentially. So you are, you mentioned that you were backstage during the show where the incident happened to Becky. That's, that's yeah. very interesting. I, I want to talk yeah. to you, Becky, and maybe we can all just discuss. So I, I can't see Becky. I don't know if that's a thing that you do. Oh yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi. So, um, I just have to auto switch. So, once somebody starts talking, it'll auto switch them. So, at the time, how old were you at the time you went to the show? I was 16. 16. And were you, uh, you were a hardcore uh, Colleen fan at the time? Yeah. And so, you showed up and you wore, uh, can you explain it? How you explained it? You wore a, like a skirt or something. You're trying to get her to pick you for this porn segment? Um, yeah. So, I wore a romper. Um, being like a Miranda Sings fan and going to these shows, hearing the like porn section stuff isn't shocking to me whatsoever. So it's interesting seeing like the general public be shocked at like the idea of like a porn section, but it's so normalized to me. Because like I was saying, she usually picked girls that were wearing like a little bit of more revealing clothing to go up on stage for that bit. Um, but honestly, like I'd worn it before, it was just something I owned and I didn't really think much of it anyways. So you get called up there. I find it interest really interesting that Johnny was backstage because I kind of want to know what was the reception of the crew backstage. But essentially Colleen called you up for a yoga bit. And, yeah. Um, well, it was first a try not to laugh bit, and then it was a yoga challenge. So there was like two different segments. So just walk me through how she how she guided you through that experience. Um, just from the beginning, like she called me up from the audience. Um, Porn segment when you think about it revolving around children is so fucked up. And when I got on stage, I don't remember if this was before or after the um, try not to laugh challenge, but I know Johnny was talking about how he saw it too. I remember Celine's eyes widened quite a lot when she realized that I wasn't um, wearing like pants or anything. Uh, well, obviously, what, is, what is it you think that was going through her mind when she noticed that? Well, I thought at the time that it was just her being like, uh oh, like we have to pick somebody else. I honestly expected that she was gonna send me off the stage when mm -hmm. um, she looked at me like that, but obviously she didn't. So what do you think it did mean uh, looking back? Um, well, Johnny and I have talked about this and I don't know, we both kind of think that she saw it as an opportunity to make it more funny somehow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so what happened? Um, so we did the Try Not To Laugh Challenge, which had four people on stage. And then after that, she sent two people off stage, and then it was me and this other guy. I was before the guy, so basically she had, like, a picture of the yoga pose on the screen behind. Um, Which is also just weird in general for a bit of your show being bringing children on and making them do yoga poses with you. <sighs> so behind her, and she said, okay, lay down in this position, and... Yeah, and I did it because Imagine I... that and like hundreds of people in the crowd or if it was a show nowadays, it would be like, you know, one or two people in the crowd. Um, well, they're not happening anymore, so there'll be no one in the crowd. Um, watching you while that happens and like the stage lights on you, like that is, oh, I can't even imagine. I mean, I've went on stage for a bit, but it was like the try not to laugh challenge. And it's stressful when you're up there. I know, like yeah. I love her so much. Yeah. Um, 
but I remember thinking I was like this is not good like I am not wearing enough clothes for this this is really bad mm. I wasn't really sure like what she was going to do exactly with my legs at that point because I like I saw it in the picture they were open but I wasn't sure if like, she was going to do it. that or whatever um but yeah then she spread them open and I remember I was just really scared because Jesus. the romper was like falling off completely basically and I remember just like thanking God that I was wearing um shorts under it but they, those shorts also didn't like really fit me right so I was worried that like she would also be able to see something and that was like haunting me because she was someone that like I looked up to a lot and was like big in my life and I was like I don't want you seeing anything this is weird did it when she was doing it did it feel like why like inappropriate or were you just kind of it, I mean it, it happened normal? fast yeah but I would say the excitement of kind of being on stage had worn off at that point because I'd already been up there for a few minutes but I tried not to laugh challenge mm -hmm. so it definitely did feel like inappropriate in that moment mm -hmm. but it was also just kind of shock and so Johnny backstage was there a reaction to that yes I was actually explaining to Becky that it wasn't a good evening. Isn't this crazy, like, how many people you hit on your way up? Like, whenever you are on your way down, they'll hit you even harder. The fact that, like, this story involves two people here speaking out. Like, Johnny was there for that show working that Becky spoke up. Thing ...on the bus. The atmosphere was very strange. Because when it was happening, Becky has mentioned that her eyes widened. And I remember it just, it didn't feel like a oh no, look at what this girl is wearing type of reaction. It felt like, you know, she was squeezing the mic kind of like, yay, like, this is a this is a thumbnail waiting to happen. These are clicks. Like, that's the way her mind works. That's that's the way her family's mind True. works. So I, I think, can as confirm. Said, it was an opportunity. However, backstage, behind the curtain, what Corey DeSoto... Her family literally work like that. Like, they'll, you know, cause accidents or they'll, you know, do things that'll provoke a reaction or, you know, they'll make things go wrong on purpose or go right on purpose or something like that for the sake of the end video or the end TikTok or something. Their family are so all consumed with social media. It is terrifying. Does for her shows is hit a space bar on a MacBook Pro for an hour and then do a, a, a slide as PowerPoint. And um, I would usually just say- Have you seen the TikToks as well from like her shows? Like it's so embarrassing looking at her shows. It's like a bare stage and a PowerPoint presentation. Those tickets shouldn't be any more than three dollars. Like stand next to him or side stage, and then we would also I would perform with him on stage. We would run out sometimes, so I had cues and everything. But yeah, so for this segment, we're standing there, her eyes widen. Becky walks up on stage, and we could never see who she was choosing. Very low budget. On stage, so we see it's Becky, and we know who Becky is. She had been to a book signing the week prior. She had been to a few other shows, like. That's how you know these conversations were had with these young girls because sometimes it wasn't always publicly in DMs online. It was during that meet and greet moment at the end when the the fans who were like the the well known Twitter fans would wait at the end and have those few extra moments. Trey. They'd be like, Colleen, like, is this is this okay? Like, is this good for the porn bit? Is this good for this bit? And she's like, Oh my god, yes! Like, I'll look for you in the audience. Also, Trey, I remember she did this with one of my friends. Um, I'll not say her name because I I know she's very insecure by talking about this. Um, but she said to Colleen at the meet and greet, like, is this revealing enough? Or no, she said, is this porn enough? Because she was behind me. And Colleen said, it's perfect. And chose her for the bit. And I think the girl was 15 when that happened. I'll try to find you. And that was the dynamic. So these girls would just try to dress skimpier and skimpier. And it wasn't because they... Like, like the victim blaming and the slut shaming of children it, and the misogyny is beyond. Becky was coerced to wear this outfit for the porn bit, which we could get into, but let well, that's... When you say coerced, did what, uh, was that somehow... Did she, was there an expectation that you were going to wear that, Becky? Not personally. Oh, but okay. I know that had happened to other people. I remember, I honestly don't remember exactly what happened, but like Johnny was saying, I had been at the book signing the week before and something happened. My memory's a little bit fuzzy, but I told her I was going to like one of the next shows and because something had happened, she was like, oh, it's okay. Like, but that happened. I'll try to call you up on stage or something. But that was the extent of it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but like, I, I wondered when I heard your story, if there was like a... Yeah, the term was the porn bet. And if people were dressed, you know, if children were dressed and showing their legs or something, Colleen would say they're being porn stage manager or director or producer or somebody back there to like keep the show on the road. Corey, like, that's Corey. The thing is, yes. And also I wanted to clarify too, what I meant by fans being- Corey organizes and runs her entire show. So that's why the show is such a disaster because Corey's never going to tell Cauldron no. You know what I mean? Being like coerced or like lured into these situations. It's because if, if you dress a certain way, you get to have a stage moment with your idol. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want to have pictures of them on stage with Miranda Sings? Mm -hmm. Before I worked for her, I used to have my hand in the air. I don't think anyone would want any photos of Miranda Sings nowadays. I her down trying to get called up and I was called up. I did the Miranda Sings birth bit with her when I was 17 years old in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So it was your goal to get called up on stage. You would do what had to be done to get called up. And she, was, she used to spit water and like milk on fans. And, like, she spat water on me! And you know what was so ironic about all of that? 
I went on stage for the water bit, right? Where she spat water all over me, drenched me, right? She told me at lunch that we were going to do the bit. And she told me, do not spit water on me because I don't want to get sick. And she told me that she wasn't going to spit water on me because I wasn't allowed to spit it on her. And I went up on stage and she spat it all on me and then ended the bit before I got to spit the water on her. Bitch. Like you would degrade yourself to have your moment with this woman. Okay, I see. So, and Becky, that sounds like it rings true. Like you, you, you wore that with the expectation that you're probably going to get called on. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, but to answer your question about like the dynamic backstage, we did have a tour manager. We, that we, there was a team and me and Corey, when we saw what was going down, we were kind of side eyeing each other. And Corey, I'm not a Corey apologist, but me and Corey were looking at each other kind of like, uh, uh, <clears throat> modified, right? She's smart. Like I thought of all things, she could have been like, you guys look at what this world's wearing. Look at the picture. I did not do that. And then she would have gotten a laugh, but instead she laid Becky on the ground. And I don't care if Becky was wearing a pantsuit. You do not do that position to a child. Even more Sorry. so because I found a video of her way back in the day. For some reason, she was watching something where someone did that yoga position or whatever. And she stated in an old video that it looks like a sexual position. So why mm. are you incorporating that position into your show that is all ages according to you? And according to the box office. Yeah, yeah. And her reaction after the fact, she got off stage and it was the instant hot topic. What had happened to Becky Beth? Oh, they, oh, they really? talked about it afterwards. Absolutely. Maybe That's how I know during the drama. Show? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yep. They talked about it backstage or during the show? No, 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 backstage, backstage. Okay, that was the, okay, interesting. So what were people saying about it? Well, Colleen got off of, off the of stage and was kind of like giddy about it. Kind of like, oh my God, did you see what she was wearing? And we were kind of like, yeah, you're going to do something about that? Like, you need to either remove, I, I think it was Eric especially, because, you know, I had to kind of know my place. I was already getting the seniority thing held over my head, so I couldn't say much unless it was things involving me. But, you know, Eric, if memory serves me right, he was pissed. The tour manager, if memory serves me right, was like, I want this segment removed or changed. And so she thought it was filmed for YouTube? What that? It was filmed for YouTube? Is that what we wanted to remove? No, from the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's so hard to take things out of the show. Again, let me remind you, Corey literally just sits there and presses the space bar on a PowerPoint slide. Mm -hmm. All it takes is one... Low budget ass shit. ...to slide or replace that portion with like a quick segment. Becky, you were there with a the parent, right? Uh, I was with a family friend. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. were, what, did, they, uh, did they notice it? Did, were they like, what the fuck was that? Did they notice something had happened? Um, they, didn't, they didn't really say anything about it. But you had mentioned that when you were leaving the venue, you felt like, when you say men were looking at you, mean like the dads that were there with their kids? Uh, yeah, because mostly like any older men that over like 20 would be a dad. Although I do remember that there was this one guy who was really looking at me who did not seem to be a dad. He was like probably like 26 or something. And he was just by himself. And at this venue, you had to leave um, like the audience place by going down an elevator. So I was in the elevator with like my friend and then other fans. But then there was like some guys who were definitely looking at me that in ways they were not looking at me before. It was. Uh, you know, this is just like the fact that Colleen Pitt these people in this position is just and for what and for what and for what a bitch so uh, collectively when you guys kind of look back on this period of your of your lives like even before all this uh started coming up publicly were you guys feeling like resentful and looking back on that just feeling used and for the lol out of yeah, yeah of course I mean, for me personally, something really interesting that happened was I had seen a Miranda Sing show in January up in Thousand Oaks because I live in Orange County now. It was a bad experience. And leaving it, I had even run into a fan of mine who, I, I, I mean, I don't consider her fat anymore because, I mean, I haven't worked on tour in years. But I had recognized this girl. And so I had run into her after the show and we were just talking. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to, like, pull back from all of this. And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, like, this world, just because... It was terrible. And then, you know, months down the line, Adam's story is getting brought back up. And I already kind of like went, or I came out of that experience uh, back in January thinking I was going to slowly remove myself completely from these people, just kind of like trickle my way out. And it uh, didn't happen that way because I saw Adam was talking about his story again, or I should say his story was being talked about again. Thank so you. To defend himself. Fuck you, Cody. And I just, as much as it was hurtful for me to see Colleen just stand back and watch her friend be really abusive towards me. I felt like as an adult in the situation, I felt like I had let Adam down a couple years ago by not saying anything. And so I feel like I finally had a chance to do the right thing for not only him, but myself as well. And that's why I have been so outspoken this time around, because the time before I had seen finally them months ago, I've been waiting. Physically, <laughs> I haven't spoken with them too much. They, they really have just paid me dust ever since I busted my ass for them. And um, the only time I really heard from Colleen a lot is when Adam came out with his video in 2020. I had texted her to kind of, you know, be an adult in the situation and be like, yo, what's up? I think you should make a statement and say something. And she let me know that it was the same thing as it's happening now, that she was told to stay quiet by whoever and uh, that it would just all go away if she just didn't say anything. And she... Stay quiet and it will all go away.
Well, that's worked wonders this time, Colleen. Toxic gossip train. Yeah, uh, she chatted me up for like two weeks. I was like a therapist. I received more news of Trish. Okay, that, yeah, that, that was, was that was another thing that you were able mm -hmm. to bring to light because that the, the allegation that she was sending nude pictures of Trisha uh -huh. to, to yeah. her fans was was like almost unbelievable. And then I know, you got I know. the screenshots and it was like, holy fuck. Yeah, yeah, it, it was well, that was oof, that was a conflicting thing because I found them on my laptop. And this was something me and Johnny talked about. Like it was actually one of the first things me and Johnny talked about behind the scenes weeks ago, and we both were kind of like. Do we talk about this publicly? Do we talk about this? You know, what do we do with this information? And we ultimately decided to take it public. And I was like, because we both had the same story. Out, like, I also didn't have a way to privately contact Trish. It was a whole thing. Now I've taken the pictures down because I don't like they serve their purpose, right? Um, sure. But it was just in the moment. I just felt I felt so gaslit from not only this woman but so many other people in her circle. I just. I had to get it out there but part of me was pissed that trish hadn't made a response yet and i was like well i know a way to get her to and uh, <laughs> well that's it did. so it did work yeah i just really wanted people to take this seriously and i knew especially with us coming on this podcast and you know history with trish and everything like i just i think it, it, it's even more impactful that we are speaking on this podcast today and she just publicly denounced this woman a few days back um you wanted trisha to be forced to publicly denounce colleen I never thought I would hear Trisha's name on the H3 podcast with Ela sitting beside Ethan Some again. Way I just wanted, I knew that never was thought it. behind the scenes that we were full of it, and that pissed me off. Yeah, and she was. And then I think it wasn't with this situation at least. I think I was a bit irritated by that fact. I was a little irritated that Trish hadn't said anything, and not only Trish, there's plenty of other people who I think should have said something by now who haven't, and that's just my personal. You want to say names? You want to name names? <laughs> sure. Um, I think Joey Graceffa, Daniel Prada. Frankie Grande, Glozell Green. Not him just listing them. Appeared ...and were very active in her life, should be saying something. Because I know if I was that tight-knit with a friend back in the day, and these allegations started publicly coming out about them, I'd be the first to say, y'all, that's weird. I'm not about that life. So what, what, what kind of statements would you be happy with them uh, to say about it? Um, honestly, I think a statement could be as much as an unfollow or, or just okay. publicly showcasing that you do not support this person in a public light anymore. I think that's that's a statement that says a lot. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, people like Tyler Oakley wrote a, a, a big statement. And yeah, Tyler's on, was good. A streaming platform, I believe. At the time, I wasn't super thrilled with this, but in hindsight, Grace is going through a lot of shit right now. So her and Mamrie Hart, um, Grace Helbig and Mamrie Hart, like, referred people over to Tyler's denouncement and said, everything he said, we stand by it. And I was kind of like, okay, is that a comment? Did they say me? that? Did Grace Helbig and Mamrie Hart say that? Like, redirecting to Tyler Oakley's statement? I did not see that. Wow. I absolutely love Grace Helbig and Mamrie Hart. So, thank God. Where'd that happen? I didn't see that. Where? Where? Tyler said that. Oh, I didn't see that. Again, I'm, I'm good with that. It, it doesn't have to be this huge formal thing. It's just, I think the ones who were really, really active in her life, it's just a bit bizarre to me to see them acting as if nothing happened. But then again, like, what can you expect? I mean, it's just more of a personal thing. I just kind of wish that these people would say something, but it's not necessarily an expectation I'm holding on to. And uh, Oliver and- Fuck Joey Graceffa as well. Hate Joey Graceffa. Did you guys, leading up to this whole, girls. This whole uh, outing of her and her family, were you guys holding on to some kind of bitter feelings or thinking back on it, or did it all kind of come out now with everybody talking about it? Are you gonna go back here? I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> we're, just, we're both just looking at each other. Right, I'll go. Um, honestly, I had been already kind of like fading out of the Twitter fandom. Let's Not go, Oliver! Like, support her as a person in the back of my mind and like, you know, still like her as a person or whatever. But you know, I was fading out of the Twitter fandom as early as like, you know, late 2019, like, you know, I didn't last for too long, even though it felt like a really long time. Um, but yeah, so I hadn't really, I mean, I still had met her and like gone to shows even as like recent as last year. Mm. Um, but wow. yeah. Um, and, but even when I did, I would, it was just like, I went because it felt like the tradition. It was like, oh, Colleen is coming to my state. There's no way I can't go if she's coming to my state. Like, mm. I, you know, it just felt like, I don't know. I, it wasn't like this big, like, Oh, I'm so excited to see her. Like it just, you know, it kind of felt like. Did you see Trent at any of the shows? Um, no, I didn't. I have never um, met him. I think he only really went to like shows that were local around the LA area. Um, I don't. Yeah, he would go to like, he, would go to, like, he would go to like family Christmas. He would go to like family Christmas shows and stuff like that. And he would sit his ass on stage and do nothing. Probably looking out in the crowd, you know. Yeah, he would only stay local. Um, California shows like SoCal. And so, did you have like this moment? You're like, oh shit, I have this experience with Trent. I should share this. Yeah, so I even maybe like a, a year ago, like a year or two ago, I thought like, you know, maybe I should share this to warn people because I still like 
I knew from other people that told me, because of course I couldn't see his tweets because I was blocked, but other people told me that he was still interacting with the people on the timeline. And I'm like, I feel like I should warn people. But mm -hmm. at, at the time, you know, when I felt like that people weren't going to perceive that very well, because mm. I don't, I don't know why. I just, I didn't think, I thought people were probably well, going to. That's what happened to Adam in 2020. Like, how right, yeah, I didn't want to, yeah. And so I would say, so, I wanted to ask you guys, did you, were you guys on the receiving end of any harassment and, and, and shit when you guys share, uh, shared your stories? I mean, wow. yeah. Becky's yeah. getting an, an emphatic <laughs> nodding. But that's interesting to me because yours came out recently, right, Becky? Yeah, um, I, going back to the original conversation, I think I kind of slowly stopped being a fan of Queen from that night, and especially when in 2020 those racist videos came out because I'm part Mexican and I saw that and I was like, no. Um, but I posted originally about the stage experience on like the Queen Snark Reddit about seven months ago. Mm. And um, because I'd been holding it in for so long, because I knew if I had said anything, it would have been, a, would have been like an Adam situation. People would have been like, you're just unbreakable because everybody wants to be a call on stage. But yeah, I did um, get a lot of support on the Reddit page from that. So then I kind of was like, well, maybe I can talk about it now when when like this happened, just all happened a few weeks ago. Um, so like, I posted that TikTok and stuff, but I've definitely gotten an insane amount of backla backlash and people like mm -hmm. commenting on my body and stuff of like, when I was 16. It's just, it's crazy. Wow. That's gross. Are they calling fans or just random TikTok freaks? Um, I think a mix of both. I would say mostly random TikTok freaks. Yeah. Yeah, they're the worst. Jesus Christ. Yeah, some people have been really horrible to Becky. Like, I honestly feel so bad for her. Like, honestly, everyone just like, give her all of your support. Like, she could really use it right now because there are so many horrible people. Yeah, I hope it's not getting you too much. There, I know that mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who are appreciative and support you. And anyone who's saying anything bad is just a total fucking troll freak. I always hate when the people like Colleen in the situation like in Colleen's or whatever it is when they say that the victims are just like doing it for clout it's like this is really hard to do what you guys are doing this is not fun and like what you're saying you're thank getting, you hey, you're nasty comments you're getting all kinds of stuff why would anybody do this for clout you know yeah I'm like, like why why would I want to be known for yeah. this <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I think we'll separate TikTok account and everything for this like I don't really want people tracing it back to who I am personally I mean it happened because this has been picked up by so many like news outlets and stuff but mm -hmm. then Becky, I want to, I want to ask you, in Colleen's video, she described what she did to you as a fart joke. Oh, yes. Is that accurate? I don't know that that's accurate. I mean, when that, like, happened, when she grabbed my legs, there was a fart sound playing over the speakers, so I guess it was, like, that's what they wanted it to be seen as. I don't think that's what she really intended it to be. Like, I think there was something... And I don't know if anyone that. really saw this, but when TMZ... This is, like, a theory that's going around right now. Uh, when TMZ uh, released an article defending Colleen, it was kind of heavily speculated that... Hold on, let me show you the girls, because they're both being really cute right now. It was kind of heavily speculated. It was heavily speculated that Colleen paid TMZ to write an article um, that was about, you know classing the Becky thing off as a fart joke. So then whenever Colleen comes out and calls it a fart joke, everyone was like, wait, were you the one that leaked the story to TMZ to write it as a fart joke? Just something to note. I remember there in a sexual way. Um, I also saw somebody say that they think it was actually a queef joke, which makes a lot more sense because she was obsessed Brother, with it. Yeah. She was obsessed but with yeah, queefing. Yeah, no, TMZ made an article about it and oh, called sorry. it a fart joke and said that's why people were um, canceled. Sorry, I didn't realize Becky went on to say her, that. So I assume that's where she got it. Oh, from. they actually they actually had a headline that she's getting canceled for a fart joke? Yes, this was in like the beginning of the uh -huh. start coming, start coming out. Fuck so, yeah, TMZ. Fuck from, TMZ. The song, but yeah, I was pretty upset about it because I don't know it was definitely something very vulnerable to talk about, and I didn't want to talk about it for so long. And now it's kind of the joke of a very large internet meme. So she completely minimized your experience, and yeah, uh, your experience was very valid. And it was very horrible. And thank yeah. you for speaking about it, all of you. Yeah, Olivia is a fallen fan, so she's right there. With you right <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what do you guys wish that she would have done, like instead of the ukulele song? <laughs> Anything? Where's Johnny? That's like, no, not that would be better. Just, just nothing would be better. Than that. Yeah. I am actually curious what was your guys' reaction when you saw that you could come out? <laughs> I was like, what the hell is she doing with the ukulele? Like, what is she doing? <laughs> I've been taking a nap when it happens, and people were like texting me and were like kind of briefing me on it beforehand, so I knew it was coming. She didn't even mention your experience, Oliver. I like, uh, oh, she, oh, he lost connection. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in, in closing, I want to thank the three of you guys for taking the time to call again. I think it's great. Yeah. Is there anything you guys want to share or anything uh, that you want to say before we part ways? Um, is, Johnny Johnny supporting us? is Johnny here? Or did he just come? I don't know. He, he, like, Johnny, Johnny, he, 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 he said his internet gave up for a second. Oh, oh, yeah. Are, I don't know if you heard the questions, Johnny, if you were watching or could hear No, anything. I'm sorry. My internet gave up for a second, but I'm back. I was just asking what was everyone's reaction to the Uke video. And... Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, um, well, I'm glad. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I... <laughs> I don't even know. It was like the most surprising, unsurprising thing I've ever experienced. It's kind of surreal, isn't it? Yeah, I really did think I was. It was deranged, is what it was. Like, oh, what a fever dream, but it never happened. I'm still stuck in this nightmare. 
So I was asking uh, the three of you uh, as we part ways if there's anything you guys wanted to say or uh, anything else you wanted to talk about before we left. Did you guys go already? No, no, no. no, no. I think Matthew was going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say thank you for supporting us through this. That's about all I have to say. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right. Well, that was um, really interesting. I just see Oliver commented and said that um, so, his section is uploaded on here. So we're going to watch this before we go. But anyway, that section was really 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 good and i'm so proud of all of them but let's hear not colleen spelt wrong in this um oliver speak now about uh, I guess, uh, trends Johnny, i want to ask you i want to move on to um i want to talk to oliver a little bit about these these text exchanges with trent uh her brother and um johnny had you ever met trent uh, while working for not while working i actually had a friendship as a minor with trent where i had no 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 with a few other friends we were doing a road trip in california and we stopped in santa barbara and she made plans with him to hang out, and I was like, okay. So we did, and it was fine. But in hindsight, very weird. Even though we were adult at that time, we had developed this bond with him as kids. And no, um, no, 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 it no. Just didn't really add up and make sense. Um, and then and Trent was known in the fandom, by the way, for acting like this with fans. Like there were so many people that have stories of Trent being inappropriate with them. Or, you know, making nicknames for them or being flirty with them. Trent is a fucking Woo, 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 it's the sound of the police. Like, and he also lock him up. All the time, he'd be acted in shows. I heard someone say that it's been said that he never was at shows, but he that's was. That's what Colleen, or somebody had said that, right? Like, no, he was at shows. He wasn't at shows. Or, yeah, I read that. Yeah, yeah, but that's no. not true, is it? No, no, that could be debunked because I even posted a picture um, of Corey. You can see in the reflection, it's like Colleen and she's like smiling and she's reading us fans. But Corey didn't realize he's in the reflection and he's just pouting. <laughs> but on the other side of the reflection, you see Trent. And that picture is from 2013 or, yeah, 2013. So And you could smell him. He's part of the, the family you've seen. He, yeah. So Oliver, I want to ask you, how did, um, how did you first get in touch with Trent? Uh, his computer died, but he oh, is. Oh, uh, put it back. Uh -huh. One second, second. Yeah. Yeah. Trent, Trent is her older brother, right? Is he? What's their age difference? Yes. You know, honestly, I'm not sure. I think Trent is. Well, actually, wait. Oliver said, "How how much older was Trent than him? Like ten years, maybe." Oliver's. Um, according. Or no, twenty years. That wouldn't make sense. Twenty years older. So I believe Trent would be thirty nine now, almost forty. Yeah, I think his birthday says thirty eight, and um. Okay. I mean not Trent Ballinger on famous birthdays. Okay, yeah, I believe Trent is the oldest, or maybe their, their brother Christopher is the oldest, then it goes Trent, then it goes Colleen, and then Rachel is the youngest. What do you guys think about this? I noticed that in the chat log with Oliver, Trent says something like, oh, my family says I'm not supposed to be talking to fans. I find that really odd, especially considering that he kept attending shows, so they knew he had this tendency, and mm -hmm. he was still allowed to attend the shows. I don't know if you yeah. guys stood out to you. Well, they also had conversations like that on bus tour because he's been in hot water plenty of times. On bus tour, I remember we were in an Uber to Mall of America one day. And I use these specific details because I feel like it's important in case Colleen or any of them are watching this and need a refresher. Um, we were on our way to the mall and I remember she had been talking about, um, it was kind of like the generation in between Colleen's cookies and the weenies. There was a generation in between there and some of them had kind of spoken, but um, a lot of them haven't yet, maybe. But there were a lot of group members in there having issues with, with Trent. With Trent. So yeah, he, and he, he had a history about being a creep to, to the, the kids. Oh yeah, he called me. Uh, he he granted me the name Xmas Sucker when I was 16 because I, in his words, I was sucking on a sucker. I was minding my business, chatting my friends on Tiny Chat, and I happened to be eating a candy cane. That's crazy. And he kept calling you Xmas Sucker. He That's even funny. changed my caller ID somehow. I called my job a couple of years ago in 2020, and my boss, the next time I came in, said, "So why when you call people, it comes up as Xmas Sucker?" Uh, said, okay, um, I'm gonna yeah. call you Xmas now. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's um, so, so weird. I wanted to ask you. So, um, how did you first get in touch with Trent? How did you guys connect? Okay, all of right, Trent. So, basically, at the time when I was a big Colleen fan back in the day, um, everyone wanted follows from not only her, but also her family. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, you would be like, Rachel X1, which meant that Rachel interacted with you once. Or you'd be like, Trent X2, which meant that Trent interacted with you. Or, you know, Jessica X14, or something like that. It was so... So... I just like I DM'd all the other, not DM, sorry, I just like I tweeted all the other family members. I tweeted Trent asking him for a follow, um, and he did follow me. And it didn't take long for him to start replying to my tweets. And it wasn't tweets I tweeted at him. I don't think I really tweeted at him that much, like just for, like out of nowhere. Um, but he would respond to like a lot of my tweets, and these are mostly just tweets that I was tweeting out to like my friends that were my age that um, I made through the fandom. But eventually, I was like, oh, he keeps like responding to me a lot. Like I wonder if he would answer a DM because also at the time people would want to have DMs from the family members too. It would be something that they would try to, like aim for, you know? Cause... And the, why were the family members giving them? Sorry, babe, didn't mean to scream. Why would the family members give it to them? So that's what everyone wanted. They wanted to talk to the Ballinger family. And so I messaged him. Um, I was like, oh, do you respond to DMs? And then he was like, sometimes. And then I think I may have messaged him one or two more times myself first. But then after that, he started messaging me first. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it would be like, I would tweet about something and then he would like message me, he would DM me about that tweet or something. And Why? Like, I don't know. But anyway, um, but then it started to become more frequent because it was kind of like scattered like for the first couple months or so. But then it quickly turned into like a almost everyday thing and then became an everyday thing. So how old were you yeah. at the time? Uh, 13 when it first started. 
Uh, he, uh, uh, he was 13 and Trent was like in his 30s when all those DMs that you saw. He was 33 when I was Holy shit. And even at 13, you could tell that this was inappropriate? Or how, uh, how did yeah, you feel? Well, like what? So at the time, I was, at first, I was like really excited because like this is something that anyone in the fandom would really like. You know, they would want a DM from one of the Bowlingers. So I thought it was like really cool at first. And then after like a little bit, it kind of turned into confusion. I was like, well, why does he care about me and my life so much? Like, I, I was confused and didn't really understand. But I the 13 year old understanding boundaries over the 33 year old, by the way. So trusted him because I idolized Colleen so much and he was her brother. So I didn't really question it that much at first. But then, Later on, I started to kind of get uncomfortable, but even at the time I was uncomfortable, like, it was hard to, like, I didn't really know how to sit with those feelings, because I was like, well, anyone in this family would love mm -hmm. to message him, mm -hmm. and I'm being ungrateful, or whatever, you know, so I would just ignore a lot of red flags and a lot of those feelings. Well, you were 13. That. Yeah. And also because yeah. I was 13. And so, um, as he, he, as the conversation went on, because I read the chat logs, you can see how it gets, becomes more obviously flirtatious, mm -hmm. and it, it culminated when he was trying to, I forget if he was trying to meet you or get on the phone with you or something, and you're like, I don't think my mom would, would have allowed that. I don't think my mom would like that. So yeah, so that was when he, um... That was when he gave me his phone number and he said that I could no. text him if I ever needed to or, no. to or whatever. And yeah, that that's when red flags that I've been ignoring. I was ignoring all those red flags, but this was a red flag that I felt like. But you were 13. You were 13. You were 13. I can ignore. And I was already, it had been months and months that I had been talking to him. And at this point, I was already kind of trying to plan my escape from him, if that makes any sense. Oh like, my I God. Didn't want there to be this hard stop because I didn't want. There'd be some sort of drama or like, I don't know. I was just, I wanted to slowly just kind of like fade out of his life. If okay, I could. And, and why, um, why was it at the time you wanted to do that? I just felt really uncomfortable. And a lot of times his conversations would stress me out. And I'd be like, I felt expected to talk to him like multiple times a day. Oh for, my like, God. Did you, did you feel at the time that he was trying to hit on you? Did that even occur to you? Honestly, that didn't really occur to me at the time. Well, um, but Because you were 13. I still felt like uncomfortable about it. And like, it was weird. But yeah, when he gave me his number, it was like, this is going to be 10 times harder to just like oh, fade out okay. if we switch the text and we're not on DMs anymore. And so I don't know why that's what made Oh my God. Crazy. I can't believe the 13 year old was the one who set that boundary. What is wrong with this family? But that is what made me panic. And then of course, after some thinking about it, I was like, no, this is not appropriate. What is either. wrong and with this family? Yeah, three days later, he blocked me because I then told him that I thought the whole entire relationship in itself wasn't appropriate. Wait, he wow. blocked Oliver he back in that moment? That's almost an admission of guilt. I mean, there, if you read the- Hold on, I did not know that. Trent blocked Oliver back in the moment of after those texts? Oh, I did not. Yeah, he blocked- Oh my god, Oliver, I did not know that it happened, like, right back then. That is so... Okay, can this earring, please? There we go. That is so... I did not know that. That is... Oh my god. Like, he knew! The log, which he looked over, it's just like, he's just a pedophile. Like, I didn't know how to shit her about that. But, um, he... how did you feel when he blocked you? Um, it was a lot of mixed emotions, because I was, like, kind of still feeling relieved, like, from, that I wasn't oh my god. Have to, that I got that over with, and I wasn't going to have to talk to Oliver, him I'm so sorry. But also, it was... Like, it was still, like, really, like, I felt hurt. Like, I don't know why I felt hurt, but I was, like, I, like, I didn't think yeah. that, I just didn't want to be talking to him one-on-one -on -one anymore. I didn't think that he was going to, like, try to, like, block me out entirely. Mm -hmm. like, Hashtag know, so jail like, for it, it Trent. Really, really, when he's like, oh, I'm not going to be able to meet up with her and do anything with her, then I don't want to waste my time talking to her anymore. Or him, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, at the time, I did use her friends, so, I mean, that kind of makes sense. But, yeah, I mean, it was, it was honestly weird. There was a time where he was telling me that I could go to his apartment when I was older and stay there. Yeah, and I saw that. Ah! What? So, I... Honestly, like I'm try I try not to blame myself because I know it wasn't my fault. But I because it wasn't. Like, how did I not realize that that was so weird? Like you were a child. Yeah, that's because you were not, 13, like, that's Oliver. Not it's not your fault. About child abuse like that is that when we grow up and look retrospectively back, we look at it through the lens as an adult, and we think how could I be so stupid? But you you can't really see it through the eyes of a 13 year old again, and uh, it really you know it's just completely not your fault. I mean, mm -hmm. you're you were literally a child, you know. So, but it, it is it is interesting. He, he must have been talking to other kids. Like, oh yeah, he was. Yeah, he was he, known. He would also, that. and not as often, but he would talk to two of my closest friends at the time, wow. and also talk to them uh, about me. Oh uh, wow, it was weird. Yeah, like one time I wasn't responding to him for a few hours, and he was basically like trying to get my other friends to like make me respond to him wow. with this video he wanted. I don't. It was a whole thing. Um. So, do you think, like looking back at how, how all that played out, do you blame Colleen or any of them for enabling him to have that interaction with with kids? I do. I mean, I have mixed feelings about it because obviously, like, I do. Colleen did it to herself. Obviously, it's like you know, Trent, it was Trent's actions. Um, but I do believe that you know she knew about that he was doing these things, and it seems more like she was more worried about the it not getting out that he was being this way than actually being concerned that he was talking to underage people. And looking back on that now, that's like kind of that doesn't sit right with me. Well, she's the one that gave him the access, and yeah. apparently he kept coming to the shows. And by all accounts, it does seem like they knew, based on what he told you about, oh, my family says I shouldn't be talking to, to you. 
Yeah, I just feel like they're, they're all enablers. Of, of giving him access to she children. fostered the environment. Yeah. Like criminal. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, it is really, really wild because I know that there was someone that he was that well, okay, isn't a minor now, but was a minor when he first started talking to them and still received a message from him like right before all this started coming, like going down. So like, still so to people. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, dear Lord. Okay, well. For Johnny, Becky, and Oliver, you, you all handled that so incredibly well. And that was a lot of pressure to go on there. And just speaking as someone who was also speaking up, and I've spoken with you all behind the scenes, I'm really fucking proud of all of you. I really am. You all did a great job. Oh, wow. And also, thank you, H3, for continuing to platform this, caring enough to reach out to everyone. Um... Oliver, none of that was your fault. Johnny wasn't your fault. Becky wasn't your fault. These are just like fucked up individuals. Okay. Um I can't. I can't. 